what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and we are back with the Gita again and if you have not subscribed to my channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video then like it and share it with people you like and we finish the first two verses of the first chapter and we will continue with the third verse and beginning God is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and before we start the Gita we will recite the prayers Om Ajnan Timirandhasya Gyanan Janashalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Now, the third verse of the first chapter. In the earlier two verses we discussed about how the armies assemble at Kurukshetra and they are assembled in their individual parts the Pandavas have assembled and along with their seven Akshohinis and Kurus the Kauravas have assembled with their eleven Akshohinis and Dhritarashtra the king who is blind is asking Sanjaya about the happenings and Sanjaya tells that now it seems that the war is inevitable which was obvious but now even if it was a holy place, Duryodhana was not ready to make a compromise. Even if it was a place like Kurukshetra, the impact of the holy place could not change his mind or change his decision. So Dhritarashtra was not very happy because internally he knew that his sons are going to die. But it is that tendency within us which always says, this will not happen to me. As in Hindi they say, Mere saath nahi hoga aisa. In Asmis you say, Mu lagot na hai. That's actually the opposite. Whatever you think is not going to happen to you is definitely going to happen. Because even uh, in software engineering there is a quote, a principle that whatever can go wrong will go wrong. <laughs> All right, let us begin with the third verse. And we recite the shloka three times. Pashyaitam panduputranam acharyam mahatim chamam vyudham drupada putrena tava shishena dhimata. It's full sarcasm actually. The first part of the Gita is Duryodhana is being sarcastic. I will tell you how. Pashyaitam Pandu Putranam Acharyam Mahatim Chamum Vyudham Dropada Putrena Tava Shishena Dhimata Sargazam Pashyaitam Pandu Putranam Acharyam Mahatim Chamum Vyudham Dropada Putrena Tava Shishena Dhimata So the translation is as follows. Now remember, Duryodhana had gone to Dronacharya to talk, alright, and now he is in front of Dronacharya and he is talking. Oh my teacher, see he is actually being sarcastic, okay. Oh my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, son of Drupada. I will read it again. Oh my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu. Sons of Pandu means the Pandavas, the five Pandavas. Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev. So expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupada. Now who is this son of Drupada? He is Drishtadyumna who was, who had come out from the fire whose origin was because of killing Dronacharya. Yes, Drishtadyumna was invoked by Drupada when Drupada was insulted by Dronacharya once. Actually the story goes long back. Drupada and Dronacharya were students of the great sage Bharadwaj Muni. Bharadwaj Muni is the father of Dronacharya actually. And when they were very young, they were kids, 
so then drupad was also studying under bharadwaj rishi and dronacharya bharadwaj rishi's son was also studying under him and what happened was you know how it happens in the childhood we just keep saying things which may not have value later on in our life so when drupad was a child with dronacharya drupad said to dronacharya that i will give you half of my kingdom just like that he said because drupad was the king of pancha so he went and told to dronacharya that my dear friend i will give you half of my kingdom don't worry all right so dronacharya once upon a time had come and asked drupada that my financial situation is not good now please as you promised me in the childhood please give me half of your kingdom and then drupada insulted him very badly and said oh you are a fool whatever we say in childhood you should not take it seriously <laughs> and so and so on. what do you have you are a beggar you are just a brahmin i am a king how can i give you half of my kingdom then dronacharya became very angry and he did not take revenge then but he was waiting when he could take revenge and then what happened was when the pandavas and the kauravas finished their training the entire uh, what should i call it maybe bachelors <laughs> or maybe masters the entire teaching the entire learning was over and then in vedic concept there is the principle of guru dakshina which means giving charity to the guru to the teacher so and you you are supposed to ask how what charity does the person want you cannot give charity as per you like you have to do what the guru says and then the kurus and the pandavas they asked dronacharya what should we give you as dakshina and then dronacharya said go and capture durpad all right and then when that happened they went one by one which means first the kauravas went they were hundred in number but durpad was so powerful that hundred of them could not defeat <laughs> he was a very 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 powerful king and in that karna was also there karna was duryodhana's best friend and along with them his 99 other brothers but unfortunately they were defeated very badly and they ran for their lives and then they came to dronacharya and said we are sorry we could not bring the dakshina for you we could not bring drupad alive for you and then drupad said to the pandavas to you this tir arjun bhim nakul sahadev all the five heroes that now it is your turn do not disappoint your guru go and bring drupad and submit him to me and then they went and only five they did not take even the army of hastinapur when the kurus had gone they had the army also but the five of them did not even take the army they just went alone and they single handedly wiped off the entire army and they captured durpad and they brought him to dronacharya's feet and then when a king is captured it is considered that his entire kingdom is now under the person who has captured him so now it became official that dronacharya was the king of panchal but he was a brahmin he did not rule and then dronacharya said i will keep half of the kingdom and half of the kingdom i will give you <laughs> and by that durpad was ruling in half of the kingdom and the remaining half was <coughs> being ruled by ashwatthama who was dronacharya's son and then what happens drishta dumna is born how dronacharya is extremely angry at this defeat at this humiliation at this and this loss which he faced in the hands of his childhood friend and out of his envy he went to the brahmins and the rishis and saints and sages and said do a fire sacrifice do a yagya by which i can get a son who will kill dronacharya and then the sages as the king obeyed the sages said that if it is destined that your son 
is supposed to kill Dronacharya. Then when we do the fire sacrifice, somebody will appear from there. If it is not destined, nobody will appear. <coughs> and then Drupad also wanted one daughter because he wanted to marry her to Arjuna because Arjuna was the one who had actually captured Drupad and Drupada was so impressed by Arjuna. He was like, my God, I wish he would be my son-in-law. And Drupada did not have any daughter. That is why he wanted a daughter so that he can become the father-in-law of Arjuna. <laughs> and that is why he also wanted a daughter. So when they did the fire sacrifice, along with Drishtadyumna, Draupadi came out. So Drishtadyumna was the person who came out who was supposed to kill Dronacharya. <coughs> but Dronacharya is so much broad-minded that he had also taught Drishtadyumna. Okay. Intelli that therefore it is written so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple the son of Durpada. That means Duryodhana is sarcastically telling him to Dronacharya that you have acted foolishly by teaching the person the knowledge of the divine weapons who is supposed to kill you. <laughs> because you know very well why he is born right. But still you taught him. That is why he has used this word intelligent by your intelligent disciple. Means he is telling oh you are such a fool you have only made him intelligent. And now he is the commander in chief of the Pandava forces. He is the Senapati. And therefore he says so intelligently arranged by your disciple. So that means Drishtadimna was the one who had made the arrangements of who will be where and who will fight where. Now this was the background. Let's go to the purport. Duryodhana, a great diplomat, wanted to be wanted to point out the defects of Dronacharya. <laughs> See? Is pointing out how foolish you are. The great Brahmana commander in chief, Dronacharya, had some political quarrel with King Drupad, the father of Draupadi, who was Arjuna's wife. So, Drupada's aim was fulfilled ultimately when Arjuna married Draupadi. As a result of this quarrel, Drupada performed a great sacrifice by which he achieved the benediction of having a son who would be able to kill Dronacharya. Dronacharya knew this perfectly well and yet as a liberal Brahmana he did not hesitate to impart all his military secrets. When the son of Drupada, Drishtadyumna was entrusted to him for military education. Now on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Drishtadyumna took the side of the Pandavas because his sister Draupadi was married to the Pandavas. And it was he who had arranged for their military flanks. After having learned the art from Dronacharya. So Dronacharya itself had taught him how to arrange the army etc. Duryodhana pointed out this mistake of Dronacharya. So that he might be alert and uncompromising in the fighting. See what a politician this person is Duryodhana. So he's pointing out that, my dear sir, you have, you have done a blunder earlier, so you have to pay for this now. <laughs> so that he might be alert and uncompromising in the fighting. Do not compromise because you have only taught him. So he is extremely powerful. So do not think that you can take him lightly. Never underestimate the power of your enemy. That's what is said here. By this, he wanted to point out also that he should not be similarly lenient in battle against the Pandavas, who were also Dronacharya's affectionate students. My God! So the word intelligent disciple is not only for Drishtadyumna, it is also for the Pandavas, because he also says in the, in the translation, Oh my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu. <laughs> so when he says great army, he is actually sarcastically telling uh, uh, Dronacharya that see you have only made them so great now. That's your mistake. <laughs> so now you have to be very diligent in fighting against them. That's why it's written here. By this, 
he wanted to point out also that he should not be similarly lenient in battle against the Pandavas who were also Dronacharya's affectionate students and Dronacharya was very much affectionate to the Pandavas so he pointed out that do not let your affection come in between fight as a commander-in-chief Arjuna especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student. Duryodhana also warned that such leniency in the fight would lead to defeat. See how Duryodhana is perfect politician. I will read the last lines again. Arjuna especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student. Duryodhana also warned that such leniency in the fight would lead to defeat. Now Arjuna was his favorite student. Why? Because he was handsome. Well, that he was definitely. But that's not the reason why he is the favorite student as it is said in the Gita. The reason is very simple. When everybody would sleep in the night after eating dinner in the ashram of Dronacharya, Arjuna would not sleep. Arjuna would take his bow and arrow and he would practice hitting the trees. Perfect aim, perfect shot. And then one day Arjuna saw that. Now actually how did Arjuna come to this point? One day what happened? There was no light in the dark. And Bhima, his elder brother, was eating something. So then what happened? He saw that Bhima is taking the food in his hand and he is putting it in the mouth. Then Arjuna was a bit concerned. He said, he was thinking that, <clears throat> how did my brother eat the food without light? Because there is no light. And he asked Bhima that, my dear elder brother, how come without even light, having light you are able to eat this? Then Bhima replied, see, the answer is very simple. It's diligent practice. <laughs> practice of eating. So when you are used to putting the things in the plate and eating it, even if there is no light, you can do it right without much difficulty. So by that, Arjuna thought, if Bhima can eat without the light, why can't I shoot without the light? Why not? Yes, we can shoot. So he used to go and practice in the night, shooting in the trees, shooting here, shooting there. And by that he became a perfect archer. And that is why Arjuna's, one of Arjuna's name is Gudakesh. Gudakesh means one who has conquered his sleep, one who doesn't sleep. <laughs> and this is one reason why Dronacharya was very impressed. And later on when the other Kurus and Pandavas, they would play in, play means like they would play among themselves. After the class and teachings were over, just like children play among themselves. Then Arjuna would not be interested in this playing or these games. He would directly go to Dronacharya and say, My dear Guru, please give me more knowledge. I want more knowledge. I am not satisfied. I am not happy by what you have given me. I want more. I want to know more. I want to know the knowledge of the divine weapons like the Brahmastra. And please impart those to me. And that is why Dronacharya was very much impressed by Arjuna and he was his favorite student. And another time there was an instance where there, were, there was a contest actually of there was a parrot kept in a tree. It was an artificial parrot. <coughs> and Dronachari asked all his students that what do you see here? <laughs> do you see, what do you see? So first he invited Yudhishthir, who was the eldest of the Pandavas. And then he asked Yudhishthir, so my dear Yudhishthir, what is visible to you? So then Yudhishthir said, oh, I see so many things. I see the tree, I see this, I see that. <laughs> Then Dronacharya said, you are fit to be a king because you can see the whole picture but you cannot be an archer because for being an archer you need very, you need to hit the bull's eye, okay, which Yudhishthir did not see. 
Bullseye means something very specific. Yudhishthira was seeing the whole scenario, the tree, the fruits, the, the parrot and the sky and so many things. Because he is very broad minded, you see. And then he asked Bhima, Bhima what do you see? Bhima said, I am only seeing the fruits of the tree. <laughs> because he was a big foodie, big time foodie like maybe you and me. <laughs> And he also wanted to keep eating always. So he always saw the fruits. And then Duryodhana was asked, what do you see? Duryodhana said, I am not able to see anything. <laughs> and then he asked Arjuna, what do you see? And then Arjuna said, I am seeing only the parrot's eye. Then Dronacharya said, perfect, shoot it. And he shot the arrow and it directly hit the eye of the parrot. So, diligence and precision, that is Arjuna's trait because of which everybody likes him. He is the best archer to be born till date. At least in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, there was nobody comparable to him. So, that is it from my side. Duryodhana is sarcastically telling Dronacharya that you have done blunders by teaching Drishtadimna, Drupad's son who is supposed to kill you and now do not be lenient, become vigilant. Do not think that he is on the side of Pandavas and he also tells at the end that do not be lenient with the Pandavas just because you have taught them or just because Arjuna is your favorite student but now they are your enemies. So behave with them like an enemy, okay. That is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments then let me know and like this video click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and if you're interested to make some donation then the link to paypal is there you can go and donate okay until next time bye bye see you